right after the lowest moment of his life, Rasulullah says, while I was sleeping, Atani Jibreel fi khudrin mu'allaqin bihidur. Jibreel came to me wearing green garments with rubies hanging down, with rubies hanging from those green garments. And these, this is Libasul Jannah, the clothes of the people of paradise. So Jibreel came and it was clearly different. And he said, once again, Jibreel opened my chest, he took my heart, he put it into a vessel of Zamzam, and he poured into it Al Iman wal Hikmah, more faith and more wisdom, increasing the Prophet, renewing the Prophet. This time the Prophet knows what's happening, and he put his heart back and he sewed it up again. And Jibreel السلام, told the Prophet السلام, to mount Al Buraq. There was a particular animal, Al Buraq, and there is no animal like that animal that we see. And subhanAllah, Al Qadi Ayyad he narrates that Al Buraq was shy of the Prophet. And Jibreel told Al Buraq, Look, there is no greater person that has ever mounted you than this man. Accept it. And the Prophet وسلم, he mounted Al Buraq and Jibreel took him somewhere. Where did Jibreel take him? Before Al Aqsa. Took him to Medina. Okay, this is actually a long hadith in a Nasa'i. The Prophet وسلم, says, We got to a place. And Jibreel told me to descend and to pray. So I descended and I prayed. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Jibreel said to me, do you know where you've prayed? I said, no. He said, this is Tayyibah. This is the pure land. Why did he say Tayyibah? Because the Prophet ﷺ went to Ta'if because he saw this land with greenery and palm trees. And he thought that was Ta'if. It could either be Ta'if or Medina. They look exactly alike. They have the same climate. Ta'if made more sense to the Prophet ﷺ because it was right next to him and it had greater people in terms of status and lineage. And Jibreel is telling him, this is where you were supposed to go and this is the land of your hijrah. This is where your hijrah is going to be to. This is where you're going to migrate to. Then the Prophet ﷺ mounted again and he was told to dismount and pray. And Jibreel told him, do you know where you've prayed? The Prophet ﷺ said, no. He said, this is At-Tur. The place where Allah spoke directly to Moses, to Musa salam, Which is a sign of what? That this is about to happen to you too. Then he told him to mount once again and they reached another land, dismount and pray. The Prophet ﷺ said that he asked me, do you know where you've prayed? I said, no. He said, this is Bethlehem, the place where Isa السلام, was born. Jesus, peace be upon him, was born. Which is a sign that this is a continuation of his message. Then he said, finally, we arrived at Al-Aqsa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala liberated, Allahumma ameen. We arrived at Al-Aqsa, the place where Ibn Abbas anhu says, there isn't a single space there, not a hand span, except that an angel or a prophet has prayed there. Not a single hand span. And Rasulullah says, the Anbiya were gathered for me. Prophet I mean, this is a pretty amazing sight. He walks in and he sees the Anbiya gathered in rows waiting for Salah. And he says, Jibreel took me and he put me in the front and he said, Ya Rasulullah, lead them in Salah. So he said, I led them in Salah. Then Jibreel took my hand and we started to ascend. And he said, every time we got to one of the gates of the heavens, there was an angel at that gate of the heaven that said, who is it? And he said, Jibreel. And he said, man ma'ak, who's with you? And he would say, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the angel would say, ursila ilayhi, has he been sent for? And Jibreel would say, na'am, yes. And the angel would say, marhaban bin Nabi salih. Welcome to you, O righteous prophet. Welcome to this righteous prophet. SubhanAllah, this is right after the rejection of Ta'if. The angels are welcoming him in the heavens. The prophets are welcoming him in the heavens. The Prophet sallallahu said, we continue to ascend. Suddenly Jibreel alayhi salam, he had two glasses in his hand. One of wine and one of milk. Or one of milk and one of wine. Okay? One of milk and one of wine. And he presented them to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now is wine halal? What? Are you guys serious? I heard like 20 people just say yes. Is wine halal? Is wine halal? Are you sure? Okay, good, because I'm going to change the topic completely if you guys say wine is halal. And we're, going to, we're going to have a fiqhi discussion right now as to what khamar is. Don't give me that grapes and non-grapes nonsense, all right? Wine is haram, okay? <laughs> but here's the thing. If Jibreel is presenting you wine, is it halal? All right, so if you see a dude outside named Jibreel and he's presenting you a glass of wine, <laughs> is it halal or is it haram? It's haram, right? Now for the Prophet ﷺ, was it halal? It's 110% zabiha, hand cut, halal, whatever, however you want to slice it. It's halal, all right? But did the Prophet ﷺ say, well, if it's Jibreel ﷺ, then I'm going to take that. No, he took the laban, he took the milk, and he drank the milk. 
Jibreel made a comment. Jibreel said, Alhamdulillah, ladhi hadaka lil fitra. All praises be to Allah who guided you to your natural goodness. Law akhast al khamr, ghawat ummatuk. If you would have drank the wine, your nation would have gone astray. Meaning Jibreel was happy for us as an ummah that the Messenger ﷺ chose the pure drink. He chose purity. He chose what his fitrah led him to. And that was a good sign for the ummah of Rasulullah ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ said, we also saw on that day, Al-Kawthar, the fountain that the Prophet ﷺ would serve his followers from on the day of judgment. And Rasulullah ﷺ, he asked Jibreel ﷺ, what is that? Jibreel said, this is the fountain that you will serve your followers from on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. Then we continue to ascend and the Prophet sallallahu obviously met multiple prophets. He met numerous prophets starting with Adam alayhi salam, ending with Ibrahim alayhi salam. When he reached Ibrahim alayhi salam, he saw another site. He saw Al-Baytul Ma'mur. Baytul Ma'mur, the frequently visited house. And he asked Jibreel, what is that? And he said, this is Al-Baytul Ma'mur. It's the equivalent of the Kaaba on earth where 70,000 angels enter every day and do tawaf and they never return. So that's al-bayt al-ma'mur. The Prophet ﷺ obviously continued to ascend until they reached Sidrat al-Muntaha. And when they reached Sidrat al-Muntaha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us what in the Qur'an? أَفَتُمَارُونَهُ عَلَى مَا يَرَى Are you questioning what the Prophet ﷺ saw? All right, and he says, وَلَقَدْ رَآهُ Nazlatan Ukhra. He saw him a second time. Who is Allah talking about? Jibreel. He saw him a second time. Aisha radiallahu anha was very, very harsh with anyone that tried to say otherwise. Okay? Nazlatan Ukhra, the second of two times, the only two times the Prophet would see Jibreel in his full form. Where at? Inda Sidrat al Muntaha. When they reached the Lot tree. The Lot tree is the boundary of Jannah. And, and the rest of the heavens and the earth. Meaning what? No one goes beyond the Lot tree. No one goes beyond Sidrat al-Muntaha. <laughs>